My day. All right, here's our startup for week number five. Number one, it says to identify the hypothesis and conclusion of this conditional statement. Remember that the hypothesis is the if portion and the conclusion is the then portion. So if it asked you, it could ask you to underline, it could ask you to circle, it could be a multiple choice and you would need to read and check but to re remember um, that just the words that go along with it so two lines intersect at right angles is the hypothesis the two lines are perpendicular would be the then portion so it's the conclusion notice that we do not include the words if and then when we are identifying those two parts of a conditional statement. All right, number two, it says, name the property of congruence that justify the statement. First of all, we're told that if angle A is congruent to angle B and angle B is congruent to angle C, then how would we know that angle A is congruent to angle C? Notice that we go from this to this one, and what have we lost? We have lost B. So that goes away. So how do we skip from one to the end? That is the transitive property of congruence. And you'll see me abbreviate. All right, moving on to number three. Find the value of x is what it's supposed to say. Drawing is not to scale. Notice that we have intersecting lines. Two non-adjacent angles formed by intersecting lines are vertical. Vertical angles are congruent. Therefore, for here, we would say 7x minus 8 would equal 6x plus 11. We solve for x. I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides. So we have... 1x minus 8 equals 11. I will then add 8 to both sides. So 1x is equal to 19. And no, we wouldn't have to put the 1 there. Now, this particular problem just saw us to solve for x. Just in case, it could say find the measure of the angle. So remember, we would have to plug in x, substitute it back in. Just remember that. Question number four. It tells us that MO bisects angle LMN. So that means right now this angle is congruent to this angle. LMO is 6x minus 26. And angle NMO equals 2x plus 30. Solve for x and find the measure of LMN. Notice that in the end, they want us to know the measure of the whole thing. So since I have an angle bisector, it divides the angle into two equal parts. Congruent parts equal measures. So 6x minus 26 would equal 2x plus 30. Solve for x. Subtract, and I'm going to do two steps at once. I'm going to add 26 at the same time. So that gives us 4x equals 56. Solving for x, I'm going to divide by 4. x would equal 14. So it wanted to know what x is, but it also wanted us to find the value of LMN. Now, since LMN is the whole thing, and I'm going to use this value of 2x plus 30. If I find out what that is, in order to find LMN, I would double it or multiply it by 2, and that would give me the whole angle of LMN. So that gives us 2 times 2 times 14 plus 30, so we have 2 times 14 is 28, plus 30, still bringing down the 2, 2 times 58, and 
Thus, the measure of angle LMN is 116 degrees. Number five. Very similar, except it's asking us for some more info or a different piece of information. Once again, uh, MO bisects angle LMN. This time we're told that the whole angle, I'm going to use a different color to represent that, the whole angle of LMN is 5x minus 23. And then we're told that LMO is x plus 32. Well, if this is x plus 32, guess what? This one also is x plus 32. And if I add those two together by angle addition postulate, I will get the whole thing. And, of course, I don't have to write them twice since they're both the same. I can double it, multiplying it by 2, will equal 5x minus 23. Solving, we have 2x plus 64 equals 5x minus 23. Once again, I'm going to do two steps in one. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, and I will add 23 to both sides. So 64 plus 23 gives us 87, and 3x here. Solving, divide both sides by 3, so x will equal 29. But it just didn't want x, it wanted us to find the measure of n, m, O, so it wants us to find this measure. Notice we've already said it's x plus 32. So x plus 32, and we know x is 29. So 29 plus 32, if we combine, we get 61 degrees. Number six. It tells us that angle D... F, G, and J, K, L are complementary. The measure of D, F, G equals X plus 8. And the measure of J, K, L equals X minus 10. Find the measure of each angle. Well, we are told that these two angles are complementary. So that means that if I add them together, the measures of the angles added together will equal 90 degrees. That's what complementary is. So therefore, substitute in x plus 8 plus x minus 10 equals 90. So we have 2x minus 2 equals 90. By combining like terms, adding 2 to both sides, 2x equals 92. Divide. So x equals 46. Does it ask for x? It says find the measure of each angle. So that means we have to substitute in. So for angle DFG, we would have 46 plus 8, because DFG is x plus 8. So therefore we have 54. And for angle JKL, we would have 46 minus 10, which gives us 36. And just as a quick check, 54 plus 36 does give us 90, so that means that they are complementary. So that finishes our startup for week number five.